oh, I think we're at most at the bottom of the third. Wow. The AI story is still unfolding. And just because every single inning has continued to be shocking doesn't mean we're done yet. When I think about the deep seek news and its impact on Nvidia, there were two big arguments out there. One was the idea that, oh my gosh, if we can be so efficient in using these models, then maybe we need fewer Nvidia chips. That was obviously a garbage take. Yes, right. Um, indeed, in, in AWS cloud <laughs> provisioning of GPUs, the prices went up that week, wow. right? So as soon as people said, wow, I could be a lot more efficient in using these chips. Mm -hmm. they, made, they wanted more of those chips, not fewer <laughs> of those chips. Uh -huh. But there was a second line of analysis, which is what about the competitive moat that surrounds NVIDIA? Is NVIDIA really the only game in town? And that's mm -hmm. what I dove into with this paper, which mm -hmm. is about the potential alliance of DeepSeek and Huawei to create an alternative cheap eco chip ecosystem that could finally achieve the relevant network effects, the relevant economies of scale, to be a credible competitor to the NVIDIA CUDA okay. software mode. Wow, what this is a horror movie in the making. Um, in that world, are we talking about a competitor that's still using NVIDIA chips by routing them around some third party or something, or in fact working with Taiwan Semiconductor mm -hmm. to illegally make chips? Using so, technology they shouldn't have, because you touch on that This in your is a paper. big, big problem yep. for the export controls. So if you remember, we don't want China to have advanced AI, mm -hmm. so we're not going to sell them advanced AI chips. That means we also have to not sell them the equipment used to make those chips, but we also can't let them rent that equipment from yeah. places like Taiwan TSMC. Mm -hmm. And it turns out what we've deduced in this report from sources that I spoke to, that TSMC made more than 2 million advanced AI chips for Huawei. Now this is the Ascend series of chips, mm -hmm. which Huawei's chip designers have been working on for a long time. And SMIC, a company in China, is trying to manufacture them, but struggling mightily. So mm -hmm. the Assist from TSMC, which is great at making advanced node logic semiconductors, getting two million of these chips from them is a big, big leg up. Now wow. that's, not, that's not the end of the story. NVIDIA can still compete. They still have strong advantages. Their chips are not only higher performing, but they're backed by a much more robust software ecosystem, which makes it more desirable to develop on these chips. But if I was NVIDIA, this is the part of the deep seek story that I would be concerned about, not the efficiency gains. Or if you're the Trump White House, should it not be as well? We're cutting deals with TSMC to make foundries here. When what? Should we be sanctioning yes. this company? Yes. Uh, U.S. policymakers were enraged to learn this news, and that was the right response, right? <laughs> we don't want uh, our allies, people who are under the U.S. defense umbrella, providing national security critical capabilities yeah. to China. And that's what's going on here. Now, TSMC, of course, they'll say that this was a shell company meaning that we didn't know it was Huawei, it was somebody pretending not to be Huawei. But when you're making two million advanced node <laughs> semiconductor chips, Amazing. what kind of due diligence practices do you have in place if you can't detect a, scale, a sale of that size being Huawei in disguise? Well, so then, yeah, what do we have in place and what does this mean for export controls? This is like a joke? So the Biden administration, this actually happened in the Biden administration yeah. era when these chips were being manufactured. And they introduced a new rule called the foundry rule, mm -hmm. one of the last actions they took on export controls before leaving uh, office. And it effectively moves all of TSMC from a blacklist model, you know, the entity list, you're not allowed to sell to Huawei, you're yep. not allowed to sell to X, to a whitelist model. Mm. You're only allowed to sell to the good guys, and we will tell you who the list of good guys is. So the idea that Huawei could just create another shell company called, you know, Happy Chip Co. Done. Doesn't matter. You're not on the white list. It uh, doesn't matter if you promise not to be Huawei. I see. And any new companies are going to have to be reviewed under a very diligent thing. That's the mess that TSMC has gotten itself into. Wow, this this yeah. failure was so big that things are never going to be the same for them in terms of doing due diligence on new customers. Incredible uh, to think that this is going on here. And if you're Jensen Wong, you're wondering about the security of your own IP here, of course, right? Yes, I mean, in, NVIDIA has been uh, the victim of major cyber attacks that got pretty dang close to the crown jewels. Now, Jeez. counterintuitively, these were not even state-run actors. Uh, this is reporting done by Wired a few years ago. These were folks who just wanted to use NVIDIA chips for Bitcoin mining, and they were mad when NVIDIA adopted a policy prohibiting that, and so mm -hmm. they started cyber attacking NVIDIA and saying, we will release all your critical intellectual property until and unless 
you know, you lift this Bitcoin mining yeah, ban. Right. I mean, that is shocking that just a cyber criminal outfit was able to get so close to the crown jewels of NVIDIA. Right. It makes you wonder when we're dealing with a nation state such as China and they have their crosshairs aimed at NVIDIA, at OpenAI, at everybody Every who has day. really valuable yeah. AI intellectual property, it's a big challenge. Boy, this is all uh, pretty scary stuff. Uh, we're going to go into overtime with you. You don't have to leave yet, right? Mm -hmm. Because no. this is too important, and our, our listeners and viewers find this incredibly compelling. Um, when you consider the findings that you have made here, it also suggests that this whole deep seek revelation was based on theft. Is that not the truth? IP theft, actual hardware theft? Otherwise, it wouldn't have taken place. But you're saying that doesn't matter. They still did things with these tools that are worth our attention. So this is what's interesting. The, the trope about Chinese tech companies used to be they cannot innovate, they can only copy. That's right. I think the right way to think about DeepSeek is... They copy when they can, and they innovate when they can. It is an all-of-the-above approach to competition with the United States, and that's what makes it such a real challenge. Now, if you're somebody like NVIDIA, you see DeepSeek making highly efficient AI models. That's great. That means more people are going to want to use your chips. If you're NVIDIA, the real threat is Huawei, because Huawei has advanced AI chip design mm -hmm. that they're trying to get the Chinese government to force everybody to buy on. Because NVIDIA would love to still sell in China. They have to sell a degraded version of their chip that's legal under export control law. Mm -hmm. But Huawei says, we want the Chinese government to not even allow us to buy these degraded NVIDIA chips. We want them to force Chinese customers to buy Huawei chips. Mm. So now you're down to what is the actual competitive advantage advantage of NVIDIA, yeah. and it comes down to software. Uh -huh. NVIDIA, the reason why they're worth so much money is not that their chips are so amazing. If you look at an, an AMD, which is an American competitor mm -hmm. of NVIDIA, mm -hmm. and an NVIDIA chip, they're both great chips on the hardware side. Where NVIDIA has a massive edge is on the software side. Everything is compatible with NVIDIA chips. They're backwards compatible. They're forwards compatible. Mm. All the big AI software development environments are compatible with NVIDIA. And if you leave NVIDIA chips, you have to leave that happy software ecosystem mm. and all of your software starts breaking. You have to create a bunch of new stuff from scratch. That's what's dangerous. Got and it. that's what Huawei wants to attack uh -huh. and what they would love to use DeepSeek to jumpstart. Can they get DeepSeek to start developing attractive AI software on the Huawei ecosystem, to start mm -hmm. building some critical scale economies, network effects in this alternative ecosystem? That's what NVIDIA should be worried about on uh -huh. a two-year time frame, yeah. on a five-year time frame, on a 10-year time frame. So if frame. you're Jensen Wong, this is a real bummer because you wish you could sell your chips to Huawei or have that market, right? But if it were shut down, if China were cut off, and it's pretty close to being there already, I guess, mm -hmm. for a company like NVIDIA, as opposed to some of the others that, that make lower tech chips, wouldn't the company continue to grow at an enormous rate? We're going to hear about uh, backlogs, right? We're going to mm -hmm. hear about a pipeline. We're going to hear about Rubin, Blackwell Ultra, that they can't make them fast enough. Exactly. So for, who cares about China if you're NVIDIA? For every chip that comes off the assembly line, you know, designed by NVIDIA, there are 10 people saying, please let me buy right. that chip. Um, because they are supply constrained. They mm -hmm. are not demand constrained. Mm -hmm. So that is the current situation that they're facing. And it will continue to be the situation for many years in the future. It's really if you're thinking about the long term thing. And mm -hmm. remember about NVIDIA's valuation. Almost all of the value in the stock price is the terminal valuation, not the five next years of cash flow generation. Mm. It's what they think is going to be the future. <laughs> and NVIDIA is saying, right now, we have these competitive dynamics in place where it seems clear that there could not even be a company that could give rise to an alternative ecosystem that's mm -hmm. anywhere near as competitive as ours. And as they're looking at this Huawei Deep Seek Alliance, for the first time they're seeing, this is not much right now, but this could grow into something pretty significant. This is incredible. Uh, I had a very smart analyst suggest to me that when NVIDIA rolls out Blackwell Ultra this week, that we shouldn't be taken by this. It's just another very expensive chip. 
when NVIDIA starts putting forth new cheap chips that do this, that's when you have the breakthrough. Is that true? Well, I think they're doing both things simultaneously. I mean, they have the chip that costs hundreds of dollars, and they have the chips that cost tens of thousands of dollars. And overall, I think they are still competitive in both markets. What your analyst might have been talking about is NVIDIA's gap in mobile, Mm. right? If you think about the next generation iPhone, it's going to have Apple intelligence on it. Is that being delivered by NVIDIA chips? No, it's being delivered by chips designed by Apple. And if you think about that, you know, NVIDIA is dominant in the data center. They're very strong in PC. They're very strong in laptop. But on mobile, that's sort of the question mark for what does the future of intelligence. And mm-hmm. Qualcomm would love to say, we're going to win. Yeah. Apple would love to say, we're going to win. Sure. But the future is unwritten here, and that's the question mark for NVIDIA. All right. Spending time with Gregory Allen here from the Wadwani AI Center, CSIS. On Balance of Power, it's such a great conversation. We wanted to bring this into overtime for you when we consider where we're going here in our remaining couple of moments with the future of AI and what this means for the Trump administration. You're laying out some really important ideas. Is this White House capable of embracing them and turning it into policy? So I think this administration, if you look at who they've hired in, especially in roles that are relevant to export controls, that are relevant to technology competition with China. Mm-hmm. It is technology, it is China hawk, China hawk, China hawk, China hawk. I mean, the most hawkish people mm-hmm. in the Biden administration, people I know in the Trump administration said, you know, they would be a dove compared to the kind of folks yeah. that we're bringing in here. Okay. But there is a question between political will and government capacity. And if you look at the organization that's in charge of enforcing export controls, they're looking to cut staff right now when Mm -hmm. what they should be doing is increasing staff. And then secondarily, if you look at the Department of Justice, the group that has the specific responsibility for enforcing export controls, that group has just been disbanded. And the Department of Justice has not yet said Mm -hmm. where those duties and responsibilities are going to be divvied up. Mm -hmm. So we are in a position where we have bet the farm on export controls as a critical means of technology competition with China, but the government capacity to execute that strategy Mm -hmm. is being removed, and there's no plan right now to what's gonna bolster it back. So I'm really urging folks I know in the Trump administration, fix this. We need a stronger government ability to do this. This is not a great place for like money saving cuts because you're going to save pennies and you're going to lose hundreds of billions of dollars in American, you know, value. This might have to be our next conversation because this is incredibly important uh, right now. The extent to which the administration is paying attention to this because it has so many plates spinning at once. Uh, Let's get back to the toy store quickly before you leave Mm -hmm. in our remaining moment here. You say we're at the, I believe, bottom of the third. Mm -hmm. We've heard a lot about reference turning to inference. What's next? What is the next breakthrough that we need to see in AI? Well, I think so far we've seen AI become increasingly capable at generating text that is actually of value. Mm-hmm. Recall that Sam Altman said in early 2024 that the performance of his system was, quote, mildly embarrassing at best, <laughs> right? That was not that long ago. Yeah. Now he's saying it's among the top 100 programmers on planet Earth. You've seen that the hirings for people who are generating computer code mm-hmm. are way down as people are realizing that these systems can generate extremely high quality code almost instantaneously. So the labor market disruptions from AI, they're here now. And as those capabilities first go after engineering focused tasks where where formal verification is possible, they're going to spread to ever more parts of the economy. And that's going to lead to a wave of adoption of AI and generating real value. It's not a toy anymore. Now it's really solving business problems. That's what 2025 is. We're beyond the toy department at this point. You have three young kids. Will they write all of their school essays using AI? How does this not take over everything that we do that's driven from an intellectual point? I think it's really worth asking. I mean, one thing that you could tell yourself is in the 1950s, there was no such thing as a job called a programmer, right? As we created new technologies, we created new jobs associated with those technologies. But we do have to ask ourselves the question, as these things become more and more capable, and to use the words of folks like Sam Altman or other folks, these are going to be capable of doing anything that a computer can do, anything that a human can do in front of a laptop. That then begs the question, what are the next jobs? What is the future of education?